Mm. Hi, I'm Johnny Uzzini, pastry chef of Jean George Restaurant here in New York. Today we're going to make my rhubarb pour play utilizing the ISI whipper to make two of the components. So let's get started. So the ingredients for our matcha tea cake are butter, sugar, milk powder, all-purpose flour, whole eggs, high-quality matcha tea powder, green tea powder, a vanilla bean, methyl cellulose, and water. The ingredients for our rhubarb strawberry consomme are fresh rhubarb, fresh strawberries, water, sweet wine, elderflower cordial, lemon juice and orange juice, as well as their piss, lemon and orange zest, crushed and chopped lemongrass, uh, a little bit of simple syrup and grenadine, and again, fresh vanilla. So for the first step of our matcha cake, we have to add our milk powder to the water. Just gonna whisk that in just a little bit first. I'm going to bring this to a quick simmer. So at this point, I'm gonna remove it from the heat and I'm gonna slowly feather in my methyl cellulose. We're using the Vita Prep to finish the dispersion and the hydration of our methyl cell. I'm just blending it just to kind of make sure all the powder is dissolved throughout. And in order for this gum to work, to fully hydrate, it needs to get to below 50 degrees. But meanwhile, we're going to start the first process of our cake mixture. So the first thing we're going to do to make the cake is put the butter and the sugar in the bowl. Here is our flour and our salt, and I'm also going to add our green tea powder. The next thing I'm going to do is split our vanilla bean. That's where all the deliciousness is. We're going to add this to our butter and sugar mixture. I'm going to add the eggs one by one. Our next ingredient is actually the key ingredient of this recipe, the methyl cellulose. And what we're using is an SG methyl cellulose, so it's a super gel. The purpose of using this in this recipe is to get rid of the chemical leaveners being baking powder or baking soda. So you can see the viscosity of the, of the gel right now, once it's fully hydrated below 50 degrees, is very thick. Now I'm going to add my dry ingredients that have been sifted. So at this point, my mixture is homogenous and I'm ready to load it into my whipper. Very important to not overfill the canister. Now, because this is such a, a large canister, we're gonna do double what we would put in a smaller canister. So this is actually gonna take five to six chargers. I'm gonna give it a, a little shake after each one, again. Now we're just shaking to make sure, because if you just charged it and didn't shake it, all your gas would sit on top of the product, especially when you have something so viscous. If you could still feel the liquid being displaced from back and forth, back and forth, then you know what, you could probably handle a little bit more gas. So now I'm starting to feel like it's a solid. And you, that's the other sign too, is like when, you, when you're getting more and more gas pushed back out at the end, your canister is just about full. So I'm gonna stop there, replace it with my cap. So what's great about my new whipper is this can actually sit on the station all night long and as I get an order, I just dispense exactly what I need for each cake. You can see these molds have been lined with butter and then what we talked about before, that vanilla sugar. And then just gently tap the button. Look at that, look how perfect and creamy that is. So this is an aerated cake, ready to bake. This device is great because it keeps it, it's clean, it has a small footprint, and all night long it's just use, ease of use all night long for service. Perfect for my kitchen. So let's throw it in the oven. Now on to our consomme. The first thing I'm gonna put in the bowl is our fresh strawberries. Same thing for the rhubarb. Next is sweet wine, just some plain water, New York City's finest. Lemongrass that's been bruised and cut fine. Elderflower cordial lemon peel and orange peel. Notice there's no white, so white, we're eliminating the bitter. Here's the actual juices from the same lemon and uh, orange. And a little bit of uh, grenadine. And our old friend, vanilla. Mm. So I'm just gonna kinda mix this together, distribute all the, the liquids and cover the fruit. Get a good seal on this bowl. From this point, we're gonna go onto a pot with simmering water. We'll let this sit for about four hours on a low simmer. At that point, let it cool to room temperature. Do not unwrap it. Place it in the fridge overnight. Let all the flavors come, to, come together as one, and then we're gonna strain it out. This is my consomme after it's sat and been strained overnight. Uh, and you can see how beautiful it is, how clear it is, and it's just perfect. And the other important thing is you don't wanna have pulp in here. It will 
affect the way your, your carbonation occurs. Because what we're going to do is charge our whipper with a soda charger. And what's great about this is they tell you your maximum capacity right on the bottle, so you really want to pay attention to that. At this point, I'm going to reattach my head. And we're going to charge it with three soda chargers. Very important to shake it well between each one to really make sure you disperse that gas. There's the second one. The reason I'm doing this is I believe everything tastes better with bubbles. So I've gotten into making my own sodas. We've been carbonating everything. I would carbonate my sous chef if I had the chance. So the first thing we're going to do is using my little handy dandy tool here that we, uh, we built from the art store is we're just going to put, this is a petit beurre cookie. The next component is a rhubarb panna cotta, very simple. This is actually a, a byproduct of making the rhubarb panna cotta. What we do is we juice the rhubarb, dry that out in dehydrator, and then grind it and we get this like really pungent kind of tart rhubarb powder. A little puff crisp. The second component, hibiscus and red wine, poached rhubarb. This is just Sicilian pistachios that we kind of chopped up just for texture. A little bit of pistachio oil. This little guy is a crispy rhubarb cheesecake. This is a condiment that we've made from eight bricks vinegar and raspberry puree. So this is birch beer ice cream. I've always loved like root beer floats as a kid. So I'm always reflecting back to when I was a kid for a lot of my desserts today. Here's our carbonated strawberry rhubarb consomme. Look at that. Perfect. And the final component, the matcha cake. You want to treat it like you would treat a souffle, a little matcha powder. And here's our final dish, the rhubarb foreplay.